everybody. It's uh, getting close to the end of summer and uh, I'm already getting excited about the idea of doing some uh, fall and winter uh, trolling for crappie. So what I wanted to do, I'm going to do this video in two parts. I want to talk about the preparation and the tackle for getting ready for uh, slow trolling or also known as spider rigging for crappie and then I'm going to do a video where we're actually footage on the water where we're fishing for them. Um, I think it's important to, to talk about the preparation because you know a lot of people will uh, will either be intimidated by doing it because they're fishing with so many rods or they try it once or twice and they don't like it and um, the last thing I think is um, the rod holders that you have to do to and, and the rods that, they, that most people say you need to buy. Um, you know, 14, 16 foot rods, you know, have eight rod holders out in the boat and then control your boat. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to fish and uh, I've, I've trolled for crappie with four and a half foot rods all the way up to a 12 foot rod. And um, you know, you could, you could use uh, six foot rods. I don't think it really matters. Maybe uh, if you're fishing shallow water, um, in, the, in the spring or the fall uh, where the crappie are sensitive to the troller motor that might be an issue but I really don't think it's necessary um, to use a longer rod although the longer rods do have some advantages uh, just for the demonstration purposes of this video I'm going to be using an 8 foot pro angler rod and you know the longer the rod the better hook set action you've got so you know that's always an advantage so typically um, You'll probably see a lot of videos of anywhere between 10 to 14 foot rods that people use to do this trolling for crappie. Uh, here in my home lake here in Texas, I usually are trolling anywhere from 16 feet to 26 foot deep. Um, that's pretty common. Usually in the, the earlier in the fall, the fish will be around you know 16 to 20 feet of total water. They could be suspended up, you know, up to 14 feet or so. It just depends. And then in the uh, the really dead of winter, you know, I'll be catching fish anywhere from 25 to, uh, you know, I've, I've caught them as deep, the reading was 39 feet deep. So um, probably on average 20, 25, 26 foot is, is when I, what depth I usually catch them in the winter time. And that can vary a little bit. And it could also be dependent on the lake level and the structure that's there. So anyway, um, what I wanted to do is first talk about rod holders. Now the rod holders that I have installed and mounted on my boat are called B Readies. Uh, here is a set of four. I have them in four and in three, and I've got them that go all around my boat. And I think the intimidating thing about uh, a lot of people who look at rod holders, whether they're B Readies or another brand, is you typically have to have a base mount, and you have to drill, you know, anywhere from two to four holes on, you know, in your boat. And people go, "Well, oh, I'd like to do it, but I don't. I really don't want to commit." Uh, I might not like trolling very much. So I've come up with a way that you can test out why you like trolling. Um, and you might even use these uh, indefinitely. But anyway, uh, for those of you who you know can't afford rod holders or would like to save money, I come up with an easy way to, uh, to build yourself some rod holders, test out whether you like them or not. And this is a real convenient way um, for a few reasons. And uh, here's one that I've already made that I'll show to you. This is just a five gallon bucket. I've cut out three holes here and I've installed a piece of wood. Now this piece of wood has got little half circles underneath it. What it was was one piece of wood that I drilled circles on and then cut it in half and I attached it on either end of the bucket here, this five gallon bucket. And now I can take these rods, three of my rods, and just put them in my bucket. And by the way, I've got um, a bucket to keep my minnows at the same time. When you're trolling and you're, you usually go through a lot of minnows so it's convenient to have them right here and uh, the other thing you'd want to go with this is a bubbler, something to keep the air uh, going with the minnows. I know that you may already be thinking there's some concern, oh you're using a bucket, the fish will hit and he'll pull the, uh, the bucket right over into the water. Well um, I did some math and two and a half gallons of water uh, weighs approximately 22 pounds. Um, so you know, obviously you don't want to fill this all the way up, but you fill this up two and a half to uh, three gallons of water, have your minnows in here, 
you know, you can have up to a pound of minnows and then have a little bubbler on here, then you've got a nice little setup and crappie really don't have the strength and I'll, I'll test that out for you later. Uh, of course, if you, if you have some heavy duty gear on here and you hook into a 20 pound catfish, yeah, that might, it might tip the bucket over, but typically you'll have this right between your legs when you're trolling. You'll be monitoring the rods the whole time and if a fish strikes, you're not going to sit there and watch it fight for five or ten minutes. You're going to immediately lift up and set the hook at the same time. And this is a nice little inexpensive way to build yourself a set of rod holders. This one is, is set up for three. You could set it up for more. Um, I don't make any precision measurements on this. What I've used is a two dollar bucket I bought from Firehouse Subs and a piece of scrap right around the house. Um, this one's already built so I'm going to set this one down. And what I've done is I bought a, a Lowe's bucket. You know they say this blue color it calms the fish down. A lot of the new aerators have a blue color, so I went ahead and bought a blue bucket from Lowe's. This one is $2.78 plus tax. And then I decided, I went down the lumber aisle and I found this. Um, forget what, this is a baluster, two by two. This is pretty heavy duty. It looks like it's pressure treated. So I'm gonna cut this. And uh, what I have is three screws. I bought a, a three stainless steel screws and once I cut the little half circles in here I'm gonna get ahead and put two screws and then one to keep this from spinning. Um, that's that's an issue you want to avoid if if you're running these rod holders is that little piece of wood in the middle that's the first correction I had to make <laughs> on my uh, my first set of rod holders homemade rod holders I made so um, three screws uh, two to hold it in place and one to keep this piece of wood from spinning like this and you keep your little half circles down. Um, I may drill a few more circles so I have more options but uh, three is, is pretty much enough but if you want to have four and the only other thing to note here is with these homemade rod holders you want to use a rod that's got uh, you know at least maybe eight to ten inches from the reel to the very end of the rod because if the rod, if you've only got a couple inches, you're going to have a little problem when you pull this thing out and maybe the reel bumping against the bucket or something like that. So um, you don't have to use these kind of rods. I've I've got a pretty cheap rod here that I've that I've bought from uh, Academy quite a while back. Um, this is only about a six foot rod. Uh, I use it all the time for trolling, and it works fine as well. So you can position it like this like this. You can also move it around so you can try different angles. You can even have the rods relatively close together. I don't recommend that, but you want them spread apart. And we'll, I'll go ahead and put three rods in here and show you that it works pretty well. So there you go. You got three rods uh, set up here. You're ready for your trolling. Um, obviously, it's not perfect, uh, but I, you know, I tell you what, it's a pretty inexpensive setup. Uh, less than three dollars for the bucket, 99 cents for the piece of wood that'll make three rod holders, um, three sets with these buckets. And the last thing is to get a bubbler. Now you can buy a bubbler from Academy Sports or Walmart uh, for between six and eight dollars. The, the cheap ones, they take D batteries. But uh, if I would recommend buying a, a little bit nicer one. And this one I have here is a, a Freyville aerator. Uh, I've taken it out about five times now and the batteries are still good on it. Um, it's a little bit bigger and all you have to do is attach it to the side of your bucket here and turn it on and especially in the, the cooler months the, the minnows will last a lot longer anyhow. But um, just to prevent your minnows from dying if you want you don't even have to buy this you can buy uh, one of those buckets that that keeps the minnows in the water and then just scoop out what you need while you're trolling at the time you're trolling so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get started building this thing and uh, maybe I'll narrate some of the the footage while I'm doing it and we'll go ahead and get started um, what you're gonna need for tools you're gonna need obviously a uh, Phillips or a flathead screwdriver, whatever kind of screws you want. Again, you could just use scraps around the house. I've also got a piece of scrap wood that I used to something else around the house. This is just scrap now, and this will work as well. And what I'll do is just drill circles out of here, like two inch circles. Then I'll split it in half, and I can use it for two sets of rod holders. Um, and everybody that's fishing in the boat uh, can have their own set of rod holders to uh, fish with. The um, 
And again, if you're going to have uh, one thing, I just if you're going to you can build four of these for your boat, and you could fish with four people. You don't have to have an aerator on each one. They can fill their own bucket with water, and you can keep one with an aerator, and he can scoop out half a dozen minnows, and they should stay alive just fine for the time he needs them for. And this way, you know, your bait won't die on you. So, anyhow, we'll go ahead and get started, um, have some fun, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about um, trolling for crappie. Okay, so what I have here is my brand new set of rod holders. I've got three rods set up in it right now. Uh, probably from end to end there, it's at least uh, eight or ten foot separation from the rod tips. I've got eight foot rods. So you, you want the rod tips to be at least two feet apart when you're trolling for crappie. Um, they are adjustable, so if I want to move and adjustable by moving the butt of the rod into different areas. I've got about three gallons of water in the bucket right now, so I'm going to come down in just a second and test out how strong this is. So while I'm trolling with the trolling motor with my right foot, I've got the minnows, and what I'll probably do is put them here so don't get in the way of my trolling motor. And I've got my minnows here. And of course you want to buy a little minnow dip net, so it's about probably going to run you anywhere from 60, 69 and 99 cents. So for less than ten dollars I've got my new set of rod holders. Um, I recommend buying probably between from my own personal choice the the Fray Bill um, aerator is a little better quality. It'll probably run you about twelve to fifteen dollars and uh, you can say whether or not you like trolling or not without having to drill a bunch of holes in your boat. And if you like it so much you can't stand it, then you can go and buy yourself a, a set of B-Readies and you're off to the races. So I'm going to go ahead and come down and we'll go ahead and test the strength of this. You see I put the two screws in here so this piece of wood doesn't spin. Um, and I've got different options to move these rods. So here I can move, I can even put a fourth rod in here if I want. And uh, now right now I've got three, I could put another one here, I could move this one to the side, and I could put a fourth one here and aim it out that way if I wanted. Now it's not perfect, but it'll work just fine. The fish don't care, and I think you'll catch just as many. So anyhow, um, let me come down and we'll go ahead and test the strength of this thing. On these rods, I've got... 10 pound test. I usually use 10 pound fluorocarbon on my minnow rigs, which are a Caps and Coleman rig. I usually have two hooks on them each, so I'm trolling with two minnows, uh, probably about a foot and a half apart. Okay, so here we are. I'll take the middle rod. I'll try to simulate a crappie. Now, a crappie, when, when they bite this, is just usually going to be a little bump, and then you want to set the hook. So you'll be watching these rods at all time, and we'll show that in part two. But anyway, I mean, you may sometimes, a big catfish may whack it, and he's going to bend that rod. See, this rod's already underwater, and that bucket ain't going anywhere. It's got three gallons of water in it, and it's going to weigh more than 25 pounds. Uh, you can even put a brick in there if you want, but probably not necessary. Um, you'd be surprised how heavy that is right there with the three gallons in it. So, got everything you need. You got your minnows, you got your rods, you got your rod holders, and you're good to go.